As some of us know, in the workplace, it's common to hear people toss around the word burnout to describe feeling overstressed or even overworked. Now that term is getting attention from health experts. The World Health Organization just began classifying burnout as a syndrome for the first time. Cases of burnout have been increasing at an alarming rate over the years, bringing new attention to workplace stress. Here to talk about ways to avoid burning out is Dr. Wesley Mills with St. Vincent's. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday morning. This is a big topic. It it's is. a very important topic to talk about because the last thing anybody wants to do is burn out because that can impact not only you as a professional, but you in your personal life as well. Exactly. You know, it's a, it's a new syndrome that they've just begun to classify and it's basically about chronic workplace stress that's not successfully managed. And there are three key uh, symptoms that they're finding. Uh, you know, it's basically chronic fatigue, um, exhaustion, uh, you know, cynicism or negativity towards your job, along with decreased uh, professional um, efficacy. So that's what they're really seeing that's happening. And it's become a major problem because obviously if you're having a lot of workplace stress and burnout, um, you're not going to do very well in your job. I'm sure this has been around for decades as far as you know, us having a workforce in this country, but why now is it just becoming recognized by health experts? I think it's just become very, very prevalent. Like you said, we know it's been around, uh, but they've been doing some studies and they found basically about two thirds of, uh, you know, in this one wow. study, they, in, uh, last year they found two thirds of the workers uh, surveyed had burnout. Uh, and we see it all the time. We talk about it a lot in, you know, the professional community, especially as physicians. Uh, but it, it can be in any, you know, any job setting where there is just a lot of chronic stress. Do you know the industry surveyed? Do you know what industries they were? Uh, you know, I think it was across the board. It was just a, it was a Gallup study um, that they did in 2018. And I don't think it was any professional, any specific uh, professions, but I think it was across the board. It was just like, I think they surveyed about 7,500 full-time workers. Fascinating. Yeah. If you are at work, you are feeling overworked, you're feeling overstressed, how are ways to avoid that getting worse? You know, some of the things you can do are, obviously, you need to talk, to, a lot of the time the problem is not about the job itself, but it's about mm. the expectations. Uh, so speaking to your supervisor or your manager about, you know, setting goals. Uh, if you are having problems, going to the EAP program, you know, to talk to the assistance, employee uh, assistance programs to go talk to them. Uh, make sure you're exercising. That always helps. Mm. Uh, maybe Outside do, of work or, uh, yeah, or if you or have if a gym have. In, in the facility exactly. where you work at. Yeah. Uh, meditating also helps. Uh, make sure you're getting adequate sleep. Just some, you know, those, those are things you can do on your end. But mm. there are also some things that, you know, the employers need to do, which also can help. And what could those be? You know, having an open dialogue too with their employees. Exactly. And, and just trying to make sure you're creating a, a healthier work, work environment, environment in general. So those are, the, those are the main things. And make sure you do have those programs available. Uh, maybe having somewhere for you know, uh, employees to work out. Uh, you know, just certain things like that really, truly help with burnout. And of course, I think this all begins with a good dialogue, whether it's from the employer or the employee. But having that open communication, okay. having that door to open to have those conversations are very important. Definitely. Any other tips to avoid being overstressed, overworked? You know, I, like I would try to tell everybody else, you know, have realistic expectations uh, of your job. Uh, sometimes the job is not a good fit for you. And I try not to ever tell patients that you need another job, <laughs> right. but sometimes it's just right. the job is not a good fit for you and you may need to seek, you know, or it just may be a bad or a toxic environment. If that's the case, sometimes it's, you know, better to seek other, you know, avenues or other employment. But otherwise, you know, try to speak to your, your employer, uh, try to exercise, try to eat yes. well. Those are just things to All great of, tips. Yeah. All part of the journey, right? Exactly. Thank you so much, sir, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.